Cheers! Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, Movie Bitches. Bitches. RuPaul's Drag Race, All Stars 5, Episode 1! <laughs> so I know what you're thinking. You were like, wait a second. Didn't you guys say you weren't going to be doing full episodes of All Stars? And that is what we said. And then What can I we say? Had, we're a bunch of masochists. We are a bunch of masochists. And we, you know what? Honestly, I was having so much fun with Jujube that I was like, yeah, let's just talk about this shit. Pew, pew. Basically, the cast is so good, we just can't ignore it. You can't. I'm sure it's going to get fucked up and I'm going to end up hating it. I'm not to be negative. Just like, I always love the first variety episode of All Stars. It's always so good. It's like, oh, right. all these See queens doing hands. exactly what they do best. Yes. And then it's like, oh, fucking someone got kicked off, you know. But we'll talk about the new rules. I'm excited. I think it might avoid some of the stupid nonsense that has happened in the past. Yep. And, um, you know, every time I get out, they just, they drag me back in. I know. <laughs> just when I thought I was out. They pull me back in. I wish I could quit you. Oh, oh my God, that reminds me of the other two. Oh. And he's like, I watched Brokeback Mountain last night. I did not hear for it, but I thought you should know. My wife and I watched Brokeback Mountain. Uh -oh. I didn't like it, but I watched it. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm glad that you're liking it. Oh, I already watched the whole thing. Oh my God. Done. There's only 10 episodes. You're right. Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You are an ally. We'll see you at Pride. Yes. Thank you. Wear that yeah. suit. We love that suit. And those heavy shoes. Mm hmm So first things first, in light of current events, we've decided that each week of the season we're going to spotlight a different Black-led LGBT organization. This week we've decided to highlight the Okra Project, who delivers home-cooked meals and community resources to Black trans people. There's a link in the description, so please donate. If you don't have the resources to donate, you can donate your time, you can sign petitions, there's all kinds of things you can do, and every little bit helps. And you can just click right down there. It'll take you right there. So second thing second, thank you to our Patreon supporters. $5 a month or more gets you early access. $10 a month gets you access to our viewing parties. We really appreciate all of your support, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And most of the viewing parties are us just screaming, yes! Juju! Juju B! Yes! Evie Oddly! Oh my god. <laughs> it was too good. We couldn't not. I think we had to talk about it. We have to talk about it. Oh, I'm so excited to talk about it. But third things third, shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink. Trywink.com slash movie bitches. You get $22 off your first month of wine. Also, make sure to subscribe and share whole and... <laughs> Follow us on Instagram and Twitter and all of those good things. So, All Stars 5, Episode 1, new decade, new rules, new everything-ish. It's a new decade, a new season, with new rules. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we took your notes. You didn't like the rules of All Stars? We'll give you all of the rules. All, every rule that has ever, it's all rules. We're going to take... <laughs> right. Three minutes to explain the old rules. And then explain the new rules. <laughs> like, this is more complicated than the voice. Oh my god. <laughs> I will say, the lip sync assassin, obviously, really loved. You know, I think that's going to make it really interesting and tough. And I love the twist that the money carries forward. Love that. I was like, what now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess the lip sync assassins are all going to be really good. But if you get one of the weaker ones, like, lucky you. Who cares if you win? You got $100,000 right there. Done. I was thinking about the cast and I was like, really the only, like, Truly, I mean, this might be a controversial statement. The only true lip sync assassin that is on this season is Jujubee. Jujubee. And so, I mean, there's a lot and of great Shay. lip syncers. Shay's fantastic, but you know. Um, well, but as those rose petals fell at the season nine finale, it was like watching my dreams just fall right out of my hands. She famously lost. Famously, you know, so 
she's fabulous, but like a true lip sync assassin, like Juju is the only one that I think is like at that, you know, level. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. I mean, we'll see what everyone brings. But uh, it was interesting because I was just like, oh, this pool might get pretty big. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a lot I... of talk of Jujube, so um, get ready for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I am obsessed with our Meow Meow Jujube shirt. Yeah, but meow. I... meow. Meow Meow, Meow Meow, Diva. So what do you think is going on downstairs? Meow, 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 meow. Who was left? But I meow, also yeah. kind of just want a shirt that says, I fucking love Jujube. Fuck yes, Jujube. Fuck yeah, Jujube. Yeah. Juju B, my Valentine? No. No. But these shirts are available along with many others and some new fabulous things at moviebitches.threadless.com. So, yes, we'll get into the rules a bit more once we get further into the episode. On a whole, I'm excited at least that they changed the rules and we'll see how it goes. And this season seems like they came to play, which is yes. exciting. To play and maybe fight a little bit. Oh, yeah. If not fight for real, they're all, not all, but a lot of them are shady bitches. And so yes. it's like already it was like, ooh, this is going to be fun. Like, <laughs> yes, this shady just throwing across the, you know, ooh, ooh. And it's so because like they it. all know each other, you know, so it's like they have a little bit of a personal history. Well, we'll talk about uh, personal hit. Oh, my God. <laughs> this came in hot. And I'm sure the producers were like, no. Don't get rid of the drama! Oh, well. You know that they were. I'm not saying I was. I'm just saying you know that the producers were like, no! That'd be like kicking off Coco or Alyssa on the first episode of their season. Ish. They had you more know they were gonna. I'm saying as far as the beef goes of like, yes. Yes, oh, I know. man, I, know. I hate you. I hate you too. We hate each other. Let's like, meh, or whatever. Yeah. Not as far as talent goes. I Come on, talk about lip sync assassin. Oh, you know Coco's behind one of those scrims. You know oh, it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited about the lip sync assassin thing. I really am too. I just, I mean, again, I still am bummed that there's no lip sync for your life. But... 100%. But this is closer at least. Yes. Because yes. the lip sync assassin is like, I don't give two shits. I'm just going to fucking slay. I'm not tired. I haven't been doing challenges every week. I can prepare a look and be like, oh, yeah, you told me what song I needed to prepare months ago or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Well, and so I like that it was hidden in like a little sleeve so they didn't know who it is. Yeah. It's not like they'd yeah. be like, oh, no, you can't send home Juju B. I'm going to throw the lipstick. So we already talked about everyone's walk-in looks uh, when we reacted to the cast because they spoiled their walk-in looks in the cast reaction. <laughs> I guess yeah. they couldn't film new stuff because of quarantine. Yeah. There was something yeah, maybe happened. Maybe they didn't get they... to do like a promo shoot and everything. Something happened. Shay's, you know, neon palm frond. I am so obsessed with this look that I think it might be one of my favorite looks of all time on Drag Race. I know y'all have missed me, but it's okay. Wow, I don't disagree, but wow. It's just so polished and perfection and glam, and I just loved it. And her like double hat box purse. Yes. Obsessed. Next in, Miss Cracker in this seafoam green feathered. I didn't love it, but I am loving her, by the way. Yes, I, she has so much fun this season so far. She has not been nearly as in her head, and like obviously she talks about that. But I'm hoping yes. that it sticks. Get used to disappointment. She was just like energy and fun and, and self-deprecating and just, I was loving it. Yeah. I'm Miss Cracker. I'm 35 pounds heavier than I was in my season. Like she was just having a great time. Shea Coulee is talented, beautiful, funny, and the worst thing is she is a great person. I hate her. Next, bam, Alexis Mateo. I love her. She has somehow remained unaffected. Like she has, she's just her. Yeah. There's no, um, I'm putting on anything. There's no, I'm thinking about calculating what I'm, she just is. Yeah. And I really love it. It's Alexis' world and the rest is fucking parking. She's not acting like she's on a reality show. She's just Alexis Mateo. Yeah. 
She's there to do some drag. Bam. What's up? Here yeah. I am. Yeah. And I'm fucking Puerto Rican. Yeah. I mean, she comes in in this like Puerto Rican bodysuit, the flag yeah. with the floor length shrug. I was like, um, yes. Yes to this. Excited. Yeah. Yeah. I was having a great time with her. She's fabulous. Yeah. So then next into the workroom, Belair St. Clair as this orange Barbie in the rockers power suit. I was into it. I was into it too. So she said that she's changed her drag a lot and people are going to be surprised. And I saw that throughout this episode. Like, oh, this is very different. She seems like she's there to have fun, down to clown, kind of gets why she's on the cast. You know. I, I mean, I don't like, think she's going to make the time. top four. No. She's having a great time. She's like, I'm yes. having fun. Blair Sinclair came out with some good air under her booty, baby. Why are you so cocky, girl? She will crack under pressure, though. Oh my god, so the next is Mariah Balenciaga, aka Mariah Successful, aka ah. Gorgeous. I am so happy that Mariah is here. Yeah, me too. I mean, we've been asking for years. Years. I really love <sighs> that they went back and brought some of like my really favorite queens from like older seasons to bring back yes. and like showcase, you know? Well, and they didn't pick like five people from the same season where you're like, okay, well, what right. are we doing? We're just repeating the season then. What's going on? This like uh, day glow lizard uh, space outfit. I, I'm so into her. Yeah. <laughs> Her confessionals are my favorite. Miss Thing, if I'd had lenses in these, they would have popped out, bitch. It was very like Booberella somehow. Like I thought maybe <laughs> sure. that was like a little cheeky, you know, like. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. No, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Oh boy, so the next out, India Farah. Well, we don't know at first. At first it's just um, like a rhinestoned hanging Old, it says old school. Old in... school. And I was like, I... who is this? This doesn't seem like all stars level. I... I'm sorry. I just, the jacket, is... I was like. This is what I'll say. I think India Fair and I have opposite tastes. And that that is her aesthetic. And that is perfectly valid. I happen to actively dislike everything that she wears. I am sorry. <laughs> It's not for me. That's fine. I actively disliked everything that she wore this episode. Like, oh. Oh no. <laughs> I'm just Great. I'm just speaking my truth. But her makeup skills off the charts. She seems like there's a lot of drama, but she seems like she's in a better place in her life. I love that her and Miss Cracker are wearing the same seafoam green color. Oh, we match. <laughs> Cue the western music. Cue Western music. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then when she's like, oh, we should switch to Miss Cracker. Oh, yes, but I'd have to take it in. I'd simply be swimming in it. Oh, my God. Ooh. Right? I just. <laughs> I'll trade you, bitch. Okay. Of course, I'll have to have it taken in. I'll absolutely be swimming <laughs> in it. Did you see? I didn't realize it when we first watched it, but in the promo, I guess, there was that like shady edit of her being like, Oh, I just love the seafoam green. It's so original and no one else is going to be wearing it. This color really drew to my eye. It's so unique. It's so different. And I didn't want to walk in with some bitch wearing the same thing that I was. I don't know much about clothes, but my hair looks fierce. It's like, oh, good. <laughs> oh, my God. So the next is Juju B looking just executive realness, fabulosity. Dynasty 80s. I had a board meeting, but then later I had a funeral. You know, and I added a hat. Okay, Grandma Barbie. I love yes. the I love the gray hair though. I was into it. Yes, yes, me too. It looked great. And I love her side eye. I am so dressed for all your funerals because I'm gonna kill you all. Ah! I just, I honestly obsessed. Yeah. If Juju gets kicked off too early, I'm not. I'm, I might be done watching. Yeah, we can we can set that up now. I'm okay with it. Just saying it. If she gets Manila Luzon, I'm done. Well, Manila made it through most of the season, to be fair. But <laughs> it was still not okay. Oh, boy. So the next out. Hey, Derek. Um, Barry. I had negative feelings towards this. Ooh, I did it again. Woo! Um, I, 
actively despised this outfit. Okay, despised is harsh. Well, if you heard me, I said despised because I was drinking wine. Actively despised this outfit. I despised it. (laughs) Um, It's too much. I despised it. I despised it. It was it was not good. You know, she had these like (gasps) double layer. Well, it was one of those like not a not exclusively a belly chain, but like it was like that thing where you'd show your your G string outside your pants that was hot for a minute. Now, if she came in. If Derek came in as, don't ask me about it, I just burned down my gym, Brittany. I mean, I know that happened after the fact, but... I burnt my gym down, unfortunately. Um, I had two candles, and yeah, one thing led to another, and I burned it down. I would have loved it, just holding two candles specifically. There was two candles, and um, I can't really talk about it. (laughs) One thing led to another, and well... It just really made me laugh that as she comes in as Britney in a Britney look, I just really want people to see that I have more going on than Britney. I don't just do Britney. There's also this other part of me. And I'm like, That's... what has happened? Well, I don't understand. If she really wanted that, then girl, you gotta come in looking absolutely nothing like Britney Spears. And I know she was like, on stage, I thought her speech was really good, where she was like, if I wore that, then you'd say I was this Britney. If I wore that, you'd say I was that Britney. And it's like, yes, but, like, if she really wanted to break away from it, wear some fucking crystal method nonsense, and she would look nothing like Britney Spears. You know, not everyone's crystal method, Andrew. Well, very that. But I think I would say, I mean, they pro- they gave her a shady edit, but, like, lean in then. Just be like, look, I'm Britney, bitch. Like, do a Chad. Just be like, I'm the best Fucking Britney Spears, you all you can y'all can fuck yourselves. But I don't know if she has the same skill set as Chad. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, it's Chad. Oh, bitch. Oh boy, but also just like this wig though. It had like a bump it, but it looked the, like you know she her ponytail like she didn't quite flatten it down and it was under the wig. This look was a lot of nose for me, unfortunately. So yeah, not not particularly into it. And then her like, I can't even hug India. What's going on? Hi. Hey girl. Drama. I was like, what is happening? Oh my God, this is dramatic. I mean, you know. Sure, I just, it was like, oh, we're coming in hot. Like Derek came sure. in hot. <laughs> she had to fit a lot into one episode. This is true. In the long run, it ended up being the case. Yeah. So then next is Mayhem Miller, and I'm excited to have her back. Just gonna breeze over that that infamous Amazon bodysuit? You're just gonna breeze right over it? Oh, right. Oh my god, of course. Oh boy. I mean, it didn't look terrible, but it did make me laugh, all that stuff that happened. Well, sure. I don't know. I'm nervous about Mayhem because I feel like she might not do much better than she did in her first season. So far, it's looking that way. I love her. I'm excited. I hope she digs herself out of whatever hole she's in or, or whatever's going on with her. Um, but she's so fun and fabulous. So I'm, yeah. I'm rooting for her. Oh my God, last into the workroom. What is that? Is someone dragging something? What's going on? I Somebody's hear something. Dragging yeah. something? What's happening? Yeah, she's dragging oh the God. competition behind her. At least somebody tried. <laughs> I mean, at least somebody fucking tried. No. <laughs> I love Angina. I love her so much. We'll talk about some shenanigans that I think occurred during this episode. Right? Ish. 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 Yeah. I am nervous about her, and I hope that she gets out of her head and steps her pussy up. Because, like, I know it's there. She just needs to, like, literally pick up her pussy and take it with her. Her pussy stares? What did Juju say? They better, they better walk up those pussy stairs. She said something weird about uh, <laughs> pussy elevator or something. And then she was like, I don't know. This is like, I am the pussy staircase. <laughs> so then we find out that Ricky Martin is going to be the special guest. And oh my God, I do have to tell you. So he came down the runway and I was like, what's going on? Why is he dressed like a Caltrans worker? What's, what's happening? And then my mom made the best joke. She was like, he's stopping traffic, April. <laughs> it's really exciting to see my mom 
like get into this and I'm having a great time. I really loved when she just leans over to you and was like, RuPaul's outfit, something wasn't good about it. <laughs> it didn't make her look good. Yeah, the silhouette was really bad. Yeah, what was that about? <laughs> Does any wonder it. where I get my opinions from? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, but I was like, wait, why isn't Ricky Martin shirtless? Why is he wearing clothes? Yeah. I, yes, we'll get into it. I want to talk about how fabulous Ricky Barton is. Not that it's a surprise, but I was just yeah. like, um, yes. No, he was so much fun in this episode. Come back as a permanent judge, honestly. He was so fun and like yeah. lively and like having a yeah. great time and supportive and didn't talk too much and wasn't annoying. And I was like, this is great. I love yeah. you. He was not a good actor though in the... Oh no, but somehow it was so bad, it almost came around to being good again. Bru, you slap like me, abuela. Give me a break. <laughs> well, it was still charming. Yes, yes, he exudes charisma. And so you're mm -hmm. just like, yeah. Would you say he bangs? He bangs? <laughs> if they had lip sync to that, I would have enjoyed it. <gasps> Oh, that would have been better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, baby, yeah. when he moves, he moves. She bangs. I have she because she looks like a flower, but she thinks like a bee. I do remember a time before I realized Ricky Martin was a homosexual. I remember that. I remember that as a time. I remember not knowing. I'm pretty sure I Googled it at a certain point. And then, you know, everyone was so obsessed with him. Like, oh my God, Ricky Martin, he's so hot. He's so hot. And it was like... I can't figure out why everyone thinks he's so hot, but like really deep down inside, I know exactly why and I'm obsessed. You know what I mean? It wasn't quite Batman and Robin sexual awakening, but right. it was like, something's happening and I'm gonna repress it. I was in that stage. Oh. Yeah. I just remember everyone's mom being in love with him. So anyway, yes, the library is open. And out comes Ricky Martin as the pit crew. Yes, I agree. Well, also, aside from the fact that he wasn't shirtless and or in Speedos, what was going on with this outfit? It was awful. It, it was didn't awful. fit. It was like he was pumping gas in the 40s. Like, it was like a short... I, I, I couldn't figure it out. I, like, the pay, like, it didn't fit. Like, the silhouette was wrong for him. Like, it looked like yes. that would look maybe okay on, like, Robin Williams or something. Like, it was... I mean, we've seen recent enough pictures of him shirtless where he still has a bod, you know. This was the outfit that you wear when you don't have the, the body that you used to have and you've put on 40 pounds and now you're like dad bod Leo DiCaprio. That's what you wear. And or this is the outfit that you tear away because it looked so baggy and weird that it yeah. needed to be so you could rip your shirt off in some way. Exactly. But also then he was wearing a Caltrans vest. The fashion wasn't there. That was no, not no. Why, what I appreciated about him in this episode. Not at all. So quick commercial break and we'll be back with the library is open and the town show pretty much the whole episode. <laughs> the library is open and yes. it was, I wouldn't say the best ever, but it was very good. It was very good. I don't think it was as good as All Stars 2. I don't know if we're ever gonna get, the, I, don't, I don't think it's ever gonna get there. I don't think so. Probably that was the best library ever, aside from maybe Jujubee's season. But even then, it was mostly her. <laughs> Get my gist. Read ya to feel. To I mean, I had been waiting so long for more Jujubee in the library, and she did not disappoint. No. Oh, Mayhem Filler. Oh, oh sorry, girl. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, Mayhem Miller. <laughs> And that Alexis Mateo, I mean, I felt a little bad everyone went in on Alexis Mateo's weight, but her joke was very funny. I don't want to be shady, so I'm not going to bring up your weight. Mm -hmm. But when you work, do they pay you in pounds? <laughs> <laughs> you can tell, like, mentally, she's all right. She can take it. Oh, yeah. She seems like she's in a great place in her life. Yes. So, here for her. And then Derek, like, went in. It's no wonder you work at a place called Piranha in Las Vegas, because with those teeth, you're a walking billboard for them. <laughs> <laughs> On India? It's like, oh, okay. Derek yeah. went in a lot this episode. Yeah. 
Also, I'm really surprised to see you because I thought you had retired, and now I just see that you're tired. <laughs> I wasn't fully angry at it. No. It was with Derek, for me, everything is so transparent that it makes me laugh. I think you being here is going to make you feel more validated. And I think that maybe that's what you needed. And so I'm happy that you're here. And I was just right. like, oh, bitch. I have noticed, I remember this from her season too. She likes to psychoanalyze everyone. And I'm like, maybe we leave that not to RuPaul, but to like a professional. Yeah, I did love Miss Cracker's read to Blair. You know me. Mm -hmm. I don't read somebody unless I have a genuine respect for them. So I think we're done here. <laughs> so I think we're done, right? Yeah, OK. <laughs> I love that, too, because it was like started off one on one, but then it was kind of like, oh, I'll throw them all in there. Yes. And then Blair. The India Fera. <laughs> oh, I'm pausing so we all can Google who you are. <laughs> oh. There were, uh, there were multiple moments this episode, but also particularly in the reading challenge where I was just like, oh! You know, it was like, I love when they get so shady that you're just like, ah, oh, shit! Oh, they said that! And Mariah bringing out the rose petals. It didn't really oh, yeah. work, but I was like, I mean, she tried it. Shay Kool-Aid. Why so emotional, baby? <gasps> she tried it. I like, she came with a prop, she was prepared. And on Gina, just being like, I'm terrible at this. You always say that you come to slay. How hard are you going to slay this season? Is that a question or a read? No, oh. it's a read. I'm trying my best, you guys. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> mm, I never had to do a library. Mm. We have a tie because RuPaul seemingly cannot make a decision anymore. I mean, honestly, though, just like, just like somebody. <laughs> I just can't anymore. There's no more of this tying stuff. It's not OK. It like degrades when it's actually warranted, you know? Yeah. Anyway, Jujubee and Blair tie, and they each get some money. And then Rue announces that the rules have changed. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, there's a gag. So everyone's unpacking and getting ready. I love, there's a lot of like meta-ness going on whenever it's all stars, because they know each other, they know the show. But I'm doing this cracker, I'm taking both of ours over. Oh my goodness. See? I'll surely save you if you're in the bottom. <laughs> looking right at the camera, et cetera. Uh, but I love her. Miss Cracker is just like, yeah, girl, I'll definitely save you if you're in the bottom too. <laughs> ah, and then Angina being this like little gossipy bee, just like, yes. so what's the tea? I mean, clearly me and Derek do not get along. You don't? Mmm, juicy tea. Tell me about this in the affair stuff. Oh, really? So what's your tea? I'll bring it back to her. Oh, oh, I loved it. I'm such a gossip. I literally just found that over there, and so I'm asking you about it. Ooh, these girls really brought the beef to this salad. Oh my god. This is day one, and the girls brought the beef to this salad, baby. Everyone was like so thirsty for the drama. Right? And there was so much talk about beef. That's because Ricky Martin was there. Yeah, I haven't watched the um, Versace. No, me either. It's Ryan Murphy. Yeah. So. Yeah, I still haven't watched Hollywood. However, I did watch the first episode of Legendary and was fully oh, enjoying right. it. Which is unrelated to Ryan Murphy, just to be Entirely. Clear. Didn't someone say that the runway was Wild Wild West themed? Somebody posted that one of the episodes of Legendary, oh. the runway was Wild Wild West themed. I love that. I have only watched the first episode. I'll have to watch it. I'm excited. It is weird, the construct of it, where they're like behind the scenes documentarians fly on the walls, but then it's like, ooh, they're all getting ready for this big competition that the show put on. It's like, this is the show though, you guys. Like you're, you asked them to come here. What? It's just a little weird. You know, it's like a blending of genres and it's like confusing. So right. that's all. But that's just like on the production side, you know, like the contestants and everything else about it is fabulous. Except Love for Jamila it. knows absolutely no clue about anything that's going on. And she's like constantly just referring to the other judges to be like, what's going on? What's, uh, uh, oh. Oh, okay, great. It's a little weird. So yeah, everyone's getting ready and the gossip and the tea continues. Derek is just like, this is what happened. She was fired and she's like, I quit. And there's just like back forth, back forth drama. You're two-faced and I don't fuck with two-faced people. <sighs> All this shit blocked. 
India seems to have handled it well and and Derek, I don't know if she would have performed better or worse had she not spent her time and energy. I don't know, I don't it was just it. interesting. It was just interesting that India was like, bitch, I'm gonna pay you no mind, I'm winning this. And sure. Derek, the opposite happened. So, you know, yeah. it was just interesting. I don't think they were related. You know, if it was it would be one thing, if it was like, oh, we spent our time kicking and gossiping when I should have been preparing my look or whatever. But like they came prepared with all of this stuff already. So no, I just mean her her performance more than anything. We'll get to it. We'll talk about I it. I don't think that was the problem, April. I was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. It was a flawed performance from conception. That is accurate. <laughs> I mean it's just... So quick commercial break and we will be back with the talent show. The variety show. Excuse me. I'm just pointing it out because I have qualms. Oh. Well, there wasn't much variety. No, there wasn't. Well, there was some. And I appreciated the ones that varied. <laughs> so, Rue walks down the runway and, oh no. Everyone wants to look like they had their waist fell. What was this? <laughs> like, oh, sign me up. I want something that's going to look like my waist fell. <laughs> it's like loose drapes. If you could like you know, do a math equation and it was like loose drapes equals ugly dress. I don't know. I don't, I didn't go to school for fucking math, Andrew. Leave me alone. I didn't go to school for math. This was flawed and problematic and looked yeah. bad. What was going on? Yeah. What was this? I so, first up, Alexis Mateo, and I loved this. She just comes out with so much energy. She's dancing, she's moving, she's using her dancers, and, like, just fabulosity on stage. So much energy. She's, like, at Carnival in this orange look with these feathers, and it was just so fun. Like, it was infectious. Yeah. I liked, you know, there were certain queens... Yes, there wasn't a lot of variety for a lot of them in what they did. It was obvious that a lot of them were just doing either their most popular number or their biggest number or whatever it is, right? Like, oh, here I am going to do the song that I dance to at a club or I lip sync to and whatever. For some, it was more successful than others. And for me, Alexis Mateos was like, ooh, I would love to see her do that at a bar. Oh, yes. It was so good. And I love that Ricky Martin, like she's, you know, some of her lyrics are in Spanish and he's just like, <laughs> so fabulous. She commanded the stage. She demanded attention. Yes. It was it was very good. Did you notice that they were using like extra wide angles, which made the stage look like like a little playset? Maybe they got the new iPhone and they were doing that ultra wide lens. I don't know. I was like, oh, this is why we don't show all of it at once in a shot because it just looks like like a little like oh it's teeny oh color how tiny it is oh it's so cute. Next. Ouch, Shea Coulee and J-Lo is quaking. I mean, almost. Uh, yeah, almost. I... Uh, <laughs> I was excited it was different. I wish her knee pads had been red. I feel like it would have okay. made more sense. Like, yes. it felt like the knee pads were a last minute decision because later we find out she's only been taking classes for a short Ten period of time. or something like that? Yeah, a short, short period, period of time. time. So if they had been red, it would have been like, oh no, this is a choice. Instead, I was right. like, oh, I'm now I'm a little worried. Are you okay? I know this would obviously defeat the point, but I do love the idea of stoned knee pads. <laughs> Maybe if they were like the hard rollerblading kind, not like the soft, you know, squishy kind. But like either way, it's gonna get fucked up. You can restone them. I don't know, but I just did love that idea. Did you stone those knee pads yourself? <laughs> yes, bitch, I did. I love that. Or if you did those little spikies, you know, like the um, oh, like those like... Christian Louboutin, like. Oh. Fancy spikies and do that like it'd be like intense roller derby. What was that Drew Barrymore movie? Whip it. Yeah. She directed that movie. Yeah, good for her. But yeah, the the knee pads were disappointing for me because I was like, oh shit, she's got knee pads on. I'm excited to see where this goes. And then it didn't really go anywhere for me. It was um a low this, energy. This was good. I think, you know, it's a slow jam. It wasn't yeah. a high energy song. It went right after Alexis, which was unfortunate. I loved right. the outfit. I thought the shoes, I was like, bitch, what? Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. She looked gorgeous. Yes. Um, and I thought the moves were impressive. I mean, you know, that was pretty great. It wasn't like, bam, you knocked it out of the park. It was just like, that was really good. And I think it helped that it was different. 
So I was yes. more like, oh, what? Okay. Yeah, she thought out of the box. And it is tough. I don't know how much you can do on a pole like that. That's not connected to a ceiling. Yeah, where it's like wibbly wobbly and you're like, oh, I don't know. We don't need to have someone. So I, at a certain point, I was like, well, maybe the production made her wear the knee pads because of Eureka O'Hara. They were like, mm -mm, right. we can't risk this. <laughs> Don't joke about that. Don't joke about that. But yeah, this was good and different, but not my favorite. Next out, Mayhem Miller. And this started fun. Bye, bye. Because she was referencing her meme. Yeah. You know. Boo. Boo. Uh, and... I appreciated that she tried to sing live. It didn't work out. Now, to, to be in that thing, ha, now the question we're all doing this is, uh, excuse me, sir, yeah, I'm talking to you. Your profile says you were six foot two. She tried to rap live, and that's yeah. really tough. You know, you need a real clarity of a recording in order to right. really process that stuff in this scenario. Yes. So, tough. But she tried. It started, and I was into it. And then it just yeah. went, like, Mer. And then it kind of just went kind of like this. <laughs> she didn't. Take it to the next level. Oh my God. So then speaking of variety, next up is Mariah Balenciaga. And I thought this was beautiful. It was poignant. It was emotional. I love this. Original. It was, a, it was an art piece. Stains those who are told who to love, how to love, how to act. I mean, this yeah. was so powerful and amazing. And of course that's all heightened because of like what's currently happening. Absolutely. But aside from that, it was so fabulous. Retaliation to a terror born of this nation. Stains of those who live through segregation. Yeah. I, I was so mad she wasn't in the top I, that- My mind was boggled. Will the fear and hate ever end? That's the greatest question of all. Until then, I'll continue to tell the story of the stains on the wall. When they called the group safe, I was, what? I was like, clearly these, I mean, I was like, except for Blair, it's like, this is the top, obviously. Like Juju and her are gonna be in the top because that's correct. And then I was really confused. Really confused. <laughs> I was glad that Ricky like made sure to stop. And he was like, so, can, I, can I say something? Mariah, your performance had a very beautiful message. And the fact that you brought that message, I think is very important. So for that, I, I really thank you. Oh my yep. God. Okay, Miss Mariah Angelou. I'm like, ah. <laughs> All right, Miss Mariah Angelou, make the people think. So then, change in tone. Next up, Miss Cracker. <laughs> I mean, it was just, I, was I feel like they, they could have, they could have helped a few people out. They could have programmed it better and like had a better a flow, let's just say. Because like, it was just <laughs> yeah. like, while they were both good in different ways, it was like, oh, and now there's this woman dressed like a pickle. You know, it was just like, oh, change in mood. And screaming oh. about how she's a cracker. And like, yeah, obviously that's, that's her, her bit and whatever. Yeah, but but when you just, juxtapose them, it was yeah. just like, Boo. who thought this was a good idea? I actually am a cracker. <laughs> Tone deaf. Exactly. And it's just, that's on the production. You know, yes. like that's not either of them. And they both did good jobs. It just was a detriment to Ms. Crackers, I thought, that like the whole time I was like, but this is such I a I mean, de a detriment to us, but according to the judges, it was not a detriment at all. I was just a little confused. Regardless of the lineup, Ms. Cracker comes out with so much energy, dressed yeah. like a pickle, quick change into this Miss Kitty saloon, fabulous 60s, you know, fembot into it. She yeah. did a fucking cartwheel into a shabla Shabbat Shablam! I mean, it was really fun. Shabbat Shablam! It really felt like a kind of Katy Perry knockoff pop song or something like that. Watch what I do, watch what I can do. But it was fun. Yeah. yeah I was like, oh was. yeah, I could see. I mean, Katy Perry likes to dress like food too, so you know. <laughs> Hi, J Lo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Cracker can be the pickle on top of her hamburger. <gasps> Love it. A, mini, a little mini gherkin on top. <laughs> <laughs> so then back to singing, it's Blair St. Clair. I didn't love this. No. Well, she so tried. She comes out, she tried. She sang live, props to her. It wasn't great. It wasn't like, oh bitch, right. you showed us. I mean, this Queen Mab fantasy that she 
put on was very fabulous. Didn't like the blue hair. No. I mean, I wouldn't have, but I was almost like she could have been in the bottom just because it wasn't fabulous. I don't feel like she sure. fucking sold the shit out of it. I thought she was good. I think part of it was the song choice. Right, it was, she kept talking about you only have nine lives and something, and I was like, should she have dressed like a little cat? No, I thought it was that you don't have nine lives, so you better, but I was like, oh. Oh. It was confusing, and I thought the energy of the song was just kind of whatever. It wasn't like a ballad like Jujubee's. We'll, we'll talk about it. She, and talk it about commanding the room. Ex exactly. And it wasn't like a poppy fun ha -cha, like yeah. Ms. Crackers. So it was kind of just this in-between where I was like, well, the energy level's lacking. And she tried the live singing. She attempted, a, you know. She attempted and mostly succeeded at the live singing. Yes. That's hard. So then next out on Gina. The, I mean, this started and I loved it. She's in a little it. race car. Toot toot, here I am. She's got little like stop signs and production around here. Then she's got her drag race kimono on. Doing her RuPaul retrospective. Like, oh, we're going to take a, a journey. And I, I kind of liked that concept and story of like, oh, she was season one, right? So it's like, yes. let's follow RuPaul's Drag Race. All of the things that she's like missed, you know, along the way. Yeah. I liked that. It kind of petered out. Maybe I was just glamored. Uh, I didn't think it was like the best, but I was just, I had fun throughout. She does a quick change into this pink outfit with the racing stripes and then quick changes that into this like silver samba kind of number. And... At the end, sure, it kind of just dissolved into her sort of dancing. But it started so strong, it really made me laugh. I really enjoyed it. But then, yes, yeah. for me, I think the problem was that she didn't finish with any sort of... It was like, Flourish. oh, and now it's over. It was just like, yes. yeah, she needed to plan like a... what ta Here's the end. A conclusion. Or like, exactly. Oh, then she was crowned the winner of All Stars. Like, love, love this that. trajectory, right? Like, let's uh -huh. take the story all the way and yes. instead it was just kind of like <laughs> <laughs> yes very bad and i didn't notice it until they pointed it out but like it was true that she just kind of stopped lip syncing she didn't really you know she was just like oh here i am on stage i'm just gonna shimmy i guess that's what shake. i'd say is she 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 sold it so hard even though she was fucking it up that i was like yeah. and that's a true charismatic Her, you know right performer so for me, I was understood why she was not in the bottom two. Because I was like, no, it was great. Part of I it agree. was great. Part of it was great. And the outfits. I mean, that kimono. If she just yeah. kept taking off different kimonos and made that joke. Oh my God, sure. Or also like if she'd had maybe like a, a racing flag bra. Maybe she needed to put like a little racing flag fascinator on. Love it. At Love some point. That. Different fascinators. What if she had a crown that was painted like a racing flag? Love that. Great. Oh, she would have cool. been out of the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. So then next, Derek Barry. And, you know, I liked elements of this. I thought some of her impersonations were fun and funny. I think it's a big problem when either A, the structure, or B, the quality of impressions necessitates you introducing each impression. Caitlin, so I have some uh, dresses of Chris's if you need to borrow any. Madonna, wearing a kimono is a no-go. There was no concept. It was, and now I will say the name, the first name, of the person I'm going to impersonate, and then I will say one line as them, and then I will say a different first person's name and say one line of them, and they didn't connect or coordinate with each other or well they did a little in the sense that it was like her whole concept was that she called all of these people when she found out she was going to be on all stars five but none of and them this was their response none of them gave her advice share you called me after madonna fuck you Miley, oh my God, my dad is gonna pitch a tent. No one was like, this is what you gotta do, kid. I also called Joan Rivers and she said, I didn't say anything. I am dead, you fucking moron. Ah! There was no concept. It didn't make any sense. I want to like Derek's so badly, 
it was very scattered. And again, I think the problem is just that you can't just be like, oh, Robert De Niro. You know, like, I don't know. You can't just name people and then be like, here's me saying a sentence that sounds mostly like what they would sound like, but sometimes not as much. And again, I'm dressed like Britney Spears. Right. I appreciated that it wasn't just I'm lip syncing slash dancing to something, but it was unsuccessful. Stop! Doing impressions, girl. <laughs> so then next up, Miss Juju B. Oh my God. I mean, I would buy this song on iTunes. Honestly. I think you can. But like, I would actually, like, go ahead and potentially do that. Put your money where your mouth is, April. I thought this was really good. I took me a second. She's such a good lip syncer that I was like, I thought she was maybe singing with a background track. She wasn't? I don't want to love again no more. Oh, maybe she was. I thought she was singing live. Was she not? I don't know. <gasps> now that is a sign of a great me, I mean, singer. I, I don't know, but it didn't matter because it fooled me. She was even like breathing with it. That's why, like, <gasps> interesting. Well, so she comes out and sings a fucking ballad like it's the end of Funny Girl in this eleganza dress. And I was just like, yes. All the yeah. emotion was, I mean, I was uh, like, fuck, a oh, fuck. Yeah. Lipstick assassin. Yes. Oh. oh God, I was like emotional about this. Yes. Like, yes. Yes. She made me like hear the lyrics and feel them. But I was mad she was not in the top. What I know, I know. So then last was India Farah, who did actually really impress me and surprise me. I was not expecting it to be this energetic and like intense, and you know it was very impressive. Well, and she did a great job of taking the thing she's famous for, making fun of herself, making fun of it, referencing the show, et cetera, et cetera. You know, drag is not a context sport. Drag is not a context sport. <laughs> right. Oh my God, when she was like, do the, get her off of me. Get her off of me. Do the get her off of me. <laughs> do the get her off of me. And this was one of those ones where it was like, oh, this is the number she would do in a club, right? This is the song mashup, yes. you know? Like, she's well, and perfect, I, and I, she's beautiful, beautiful, or you know, one of those, yeah. right? I'm not mad at it. I thought she did a really good job with it. But I was like, oh, I see what this is from. Also, I hated this outfit. I just, I'm sorry. Like, pink, hot pink and hot orange fringe, hairy boobed bodysuit with then the patent leather boots. I didn't like it. Was that, wait, I thought that was her lip sync look. No, that was another ugly, ruffled roses. Right. Yeah. So it's we're just never gonna have the same aesthetic, I don't think. I'm willing if she wears something out and I like it, I'm not obviously I will say that was fabulous. I just think even in her season, I always remember being like, oh, well, this is not for me. It's the hat with the feather and the ponytail to the floor and the glitter lips, your boobs out with X's and a tarantula or something on your VJJ. But I thought this sure. was so energetic. Oh my god, this crazy headbang fucking wigography giving me a yeah. headache. And Ricky Martin. Oh, well, let me just help you out with that one. <laughs> but this choreography was great and the energy was fabulous. And yeah. that slide I understood. into home on the knee was good. <gasps> right? Yeah. That was really good. She was great. There was a there lot was of a high really bar. Good like, nobody yeah. was terrible. I mean, Derek's was not great, but like, no one was terrible. 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 So Shay and Mariah and Juju and Blair are called to the front and I was like, oh, okay, top, top four. Cool. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with, with all of this, but like obviously Juju and Mariah will be safe. <laughs> I was shocked too. In all honesty, I think I would have put Alexis, Juju and Mariah in the top three. Yeah. So there's that. But that's not the case. India wins and I'm... I was perfect. She did great. It was also fabulous. Derek and Mayhem are in the bottom. Derek is surprised by this fact. I would have put on Gina. I would put on Gina. I can't believe it wasn't on Gina and Mayhem in the middle. I thought it was going to be on Gina and Mayhem. I mean, I guess, what are you going to say? Oh, of course I'm in the bottom. No, you're going to be like, I would have put the other person in the bottom. And then everyone has to go back and now it's changed the dynamic. Now they only have to talk to India and they right. have to talk to the group as a whole, which is good because like in the past, it's just been like, and then the group kind of just, you know, sits on their hands on the couch 
waiting around. Consoling the other person that was like, I don't want to have to send my friend home. Yeah, you're like, like, okay. Yeah. We did have a real party moment. And knowing that you are vulnerable is all I needed to know that you are real. Party. Derek's trying to convince, like through gritted teeth, trying to convince India, like, I already know you're gonna vote for me, bitch. And yeah. just like trying to talk to her and be like, well, I really appreciate that you were vulnerable on the runway, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, okay, great. I'll take that under advisement. Party. <laughs> okay. I'll take that into consideration. Okay. Yeah. India talks to Derek. It's fairly evident that she's going to vote for her, kind of regardless. And then she talks to Mayhem and immediately is just like, so, Alliance, because I'm obviously not voting for you? Great. If I am ever in this position... Oh, okay, let's talk. I mean... Let's talk. I got you. Okay. You know what's up. Interesting. <laughs> Keep me, bitch. Yes. Right? <laughs> Keep me, bitch. I thought this was a little early to be forming alliances, especially where it's like, it's India Farah girl, and I don't know if it's really gonna matter if she's picking you or not. But which like, we'll learn later, it didn't, but like. That's a risky game to play. It doesn't really Not as risky maybe. with India Farah. If it was Jujubee, bitch, you better be on your knees begging. <laughs> it didn't cost Mayhem that much to be like, yeah, girl. Or did it? Because now then India is going to be like, well, Mayhem, girl, you got my back. You said you did. What's she going to say? Nah, bitch. I don't think I'm going to save you. I'm just saying that it, it brings in the whole thing of like alliances already at episode one. Sure. Then you just tank that lip sync. Oh, girl, I tried. You lose that $20,000 check, though. That oh. rollover makes it interesting. It really does. It's crazy. So quick and break and we will be back with the Lip Sync Assassin. Oh my God. Oh my God. And also on time. <laughs> Everybody's out on the runway and we're waiting to reveal who this week's Lip Sync Assassin is gonna be. <laughs> ah! And the scrim starts coming. Oh, these rainbow pants, what's this? And it keeps going up. Oh my God, it's Evie Oddly. Yeah! I... Oh. Oh. It was so good. She looked so, like a Muppet. Oh my God. It was like it was like a Muppet at a 90s rave who's also a hippie and yes. probably has ecstasy and steampunk somehow with the glasses. Oh boy, did I love this so much. Yeah, it, it was like if Stevie Nicks was a Muppet who went to like a Fraggle Rock pride neon rainbow bright rave in the 90s in the 90s a 90s rave neon <laughs> rainbow bright stevie nicks oh. muffin fraggle rock oh <laughs> fraggle rock you gotta get that fraggle rock in there that was very important i mean yeah. i just oh so yes yeah, i so, make up what she reveals oh we'll get there we're talking about it oh my gosh so evie oddly walks down the stage and i was like Great, so um, the group has decided who will be going home. Um, sorry, unfortunately, I'm sorry, but that's just the case. Um, ooh, are they gonna bring Brooklyn in as a lip sync assassin? <gasps> well, someone had commented and been like, if only they had had, I mean, Minium first is not really a lip sync assassin, but it would have been fun. Obviously they didn't know, but like, <laughs> Minium first come out. You, Mimi, I'm first. Mimi, I'm first was number third in the voting. I could not believe it. Do not attack my fans, bitch. India just would have walked. Bitch, fuck you. I'm out. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I picked myself. I'm leaving. <laughs> but they could potentially have Sasha Velour come, and if it coincides with Shay. Oh, boy. Yeah. Just to rub salt in the wound, girl. I don't I know mean... if that's appropriate. <laughs> Sasha Velour broke Drag Race. I don't think it's appropriate. Evie Oddly, you know, also cracked some of the foundation there, but. So anyway, they have to yeah. lip sync to Living the La Vida Loca. Oh man, this brought me back. Oh my God. Back. Okay, yes. Wait, I have a story about this. I'm excited. Also, Wait, my no, story was... is, did I definitely go see Ricky Martin in concert with my mom? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jealous about that. What was your story? I thought it was this, but it wasn't. Okay, great. When I first heard this song, come on, like for the lip sync, not when I first heard it in my life. 
it took me back to this period in time. I think it was what sixth or seventh grade, and I, I remembered say, six or seven years ago. And I was like, Andrew, what has oh, happened? Oh no, <laughs> it was when I was twelve. It was like eight years ago. Oh my god, was a little baby. Mm, I'm such a Gen Zer. Mm. <laughs> What's Y2K? What's Y2K? No, but okay, in sixth grade, we had this dance instructor. I might have told you this story. Come and we had to do like this grade wide choreographed performance to It's a Hot One by Carlos Santana. Sidebar if I never have to hear Black Magic Woman again in my entire life, I am okay, by the way. Just putting that out there. I'm cool. Also probably Smooth by Santana That's what, and Rob Thomas. Oh yeah, yeah. Was that the song? No. No. Okay, great. No, it was, man, it's a hot one. For whatever reason, this song reminded me sure of that. Are you sure it wasn't Smooth? I feel like it's Smooth. I feel like it, the lyrics start with, it's a hot one. Yes! That's, oh no! Do, do the choreography! Okay. Do a PK turn! Do a PK turn! That's it! Oh boy. Also, this is an inappropriate song for sixth graders to be dancing to. Wait, we no, gotta get to the chorus. Off. Turn it up. You gotta get no. to the chorus. Wait, it's almost here. Oh yeah, that came back. That came back. I knew those lyrics. Okay, so anyway, yeah. That song, yeah. yes. So yeah, we had to do that song, but for whatever reason, Live in La Vida Loca made me think of that. It Dan was a moment in time. But yeah, the dance instructor then kept saying, like yelling at a, a bunch of the kids not to do it a certain way, because that's just fruity. Oh. Yeah. But I realized, like, I didn't really take it as an insult, and then my friends Kate and Allie and I made a group we were just fruity, and then we would like bite into an apple. So it was like our way of rebelling. Okay, you were the fruity. We made bunch. a club out of it. We were. Well, yeah. bunch. Fuck that guy, by the way. Right. Fuck off. Fuck all yeah. the way off. You're making sixth yeah. graders dance to this very sexy Latin number, and now you're telling them to stop being fruity. Go fuck yourself. Straight up, fuck yourself. <laughs> by the way. So anyway. Yeah. I apologize for you for that happening. <laughs> that is terrible. But yay for making a positive out of a negative. I remember in seventh grade, they had us do like school-wide cotillion where you had to learn every week. It was like, this week we're doing the Foxtrot. And it was, it was terrible. Everyone was sweaty and it was awful. So anyway. <laughs> yes. So what were we Evie Oddly. About? Evie Oddly. Oh my oh God. My God. Just Vita give Loka. her the crowns. And the winner of All Stars 5 is Evie Oddly. Great. Pass that digital crown back to her and ah. she gets it for another year. Yes. I'm fine with it. I honestly I was living my best life watching this. Were you living your Vita Loca? I was living La Vita Loca. Oh my god. She comes out and these neon dreadlocks are so fabulous. There were so many facets of this outfit. The pants that she tore away that were then like Paisley drop crotch. MC Hammer genie pants, and I was like, yes. Then yeah. she takes the goggles off. Oh, fucking rainbow makeup around all of your eyes. Yes. Flips over to have, oh no, did her wig fall off? Oh no, bitch, it's just an Annie Lennox neon fucking, yes. And then she flipped and she shablammed and she did a, an Indian well, I just wasn't love bad. Oh, well, she was fine, but like, honestly, it was just all about Evie. I mean, she shablammed and she, she, flies to the ground and then turns and is just gonna keep lip syncing and it's just like, oh, hey, what? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, and then her red coat, she was walking around like, yeah, I'm yeah. crazy. And I was like, yeah, yes. Uh, yes, I'm into what's happening, yes. And then at some point she tears away or, or takes off the coat and she just has one of those like triangle crop tops, but it's tie dye. Oh my God. I loved all of this. And I love that she really listens and like interprets the lyrics in such a fun, cool way. And you're like, oh, you are living la vida loca. Like she yeah. is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but also in like, I just like, ah, ugh, I loved it. Loved it. I did like, there was some interaction. I mean, I was scared. <gasps> 
at some point, India like slides into home again, almost yeah. into Evie. But I was like, oh no, drag's not a contact sport. No, don't hit her. Oh God. But this would okay. be just okay. too full circle if she like, you know, cleated Except her. Evie. <laughs> no, exactly. It was like a lot. I was like, oh, don't, don't touch her. Don't touch her. You know, I thought India did a good job. It was not like, oh, and then you did bad. But I was like, oh my God, Evie. But Evie and Evie and Evie and Evie. And it's only going to get better because they know now that the lip sync assassins are happening. They know yep. that the lip sync assassins have had more preparation to like yep. fucking do all this sh reveals yep. and shit. Like they have yep. to step their pussies up. So oh, oh, they're going to be on the top floor. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I am too. And they know that it's just going to get more and more money. So it's like, oh, if someone doesn't beat them next week, now you're not lip syncing for 10 grand, which like, sure, that'd be awesome. But 30 grand, you're like, oh shit, I gotta really put, like, I wanna win this fucking thing. Like 40, like who knows? This is gonna start putting me in a to. different tax bracket. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited. Evie Oddly wins the lip sync and- Does she win anything? I thought they were going to say... You get the $10,000. Or like it goes to your favorite charity or something like that. Um, but they just said it rolls over. So I think it's just like, right. do you want to come and slay? Come and slay. Well, I'm sure they pay them to make an appearance. I would hope. I did like that, you know, she, again, you said she doesn't know what it you know says. She has to take it right. out of a, a lipstick sleeve and reveal that, yes, Derek is going home. Not really surprised. I did love when Derek was leaving though and she was like, uh, About those rules being suspended, don't act like I'm not coming back. <laughs> so yes, Derek goes home and then um, we get Untucked as its own Shut. season, as its own thing for All Stars, which we haven't gotten since season one and that's the only other season that Juju has been on. That's true. I mean, I think that's why they were like, well, we have to have Untucked because of Juju. But <laughs> obviously. The only thing that would make also, more sense is if Raven was also there. Oh my God, if only Raven were there. I would never say that. Funny story. So when Brian and I were watching, I accidentally clicked on season one, episode one, instead of season five, episode one. I was like, oh, look at them going old school. Like they're going back to the original All-Stars Untucked. This is, this is like old Untucked. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, this is like old Untucked. This is so exciting. Oh, this is literally old Untucked. <laughs> To Mars. Is this is the. You know, I just want to watch this. That makes me a bitch. I just want to watch this. And this is irrelevant to this show right now. Um, well, and then I'm sure that it made this untucked even more boring. It, it, this when you really was, compare them, you're like, oh. I just don't get it. Like I just don't get it. But what are you gonna do? They sit around. The safe queens sit around and talk about Miss um, Cracker's. Hammy thighs. Cracker got a nice bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and she has great thighs. It's not like just a ham on two picks. Right. I did love Shay's like breakdown of no, you can block someone after they've locked you. You just have to do this, 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 and this. Even though someone has blocked you, you can go and block them back. But, but how do you find know. them? Well, because you can go to the pro profile, just says no post yet. And then you can go and. Oh, can you, girl? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. oh, yeah. I did love that Mayhem was like, girl, I had a Ricky Martin poster on the ceiling. On my ceiling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on your ceiling, because oh, yeah. why? Why were you looking at it laying down, Mayhem? You know why. You know what it was for. You know why. <laughs> you know why. Did you notice that um, Derek kept saying Mayhem? And Mayhem. Yes. I really thought that it was going to be on Jonna and Mayhem. What? So yeah, Untucked was pretty uneventful. Hopefully it'll get more exciting as the season continues. But so far I'm like, eh. But the where's season- Where's my meow meow moment? Where's meow my diva. give me those drinks? Oh. So what do you think is going on downstairs? Meow, 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 meow. Meow, meow, diva. I mean, Juju is the reason that there is a two drink limit. That's true. You could give them a three drink limit. Come on. Right. If they want to, obviously you don't have to. You're right. Not telling if they them. ask for another one, know their tolerance. You know, that's up to them. So, anyway, I'm super excited for this cast. I can't yes. wait. Everyone is so fabulous. And with the game changing rules, I'm hopeful that it's not going to yeah. turn into a shit show. Excited. Cheers to this cast. 
Cheers to Juju. Cheers to Alexis yes. and, and Shay and Mariah. <gasps> and Mariah. Oh, I'm so oh. excited. Yes, I'm so excited. Cheers. Cheers. Um, I had two candles and yeah, one thing led to another and I burned it down. Mm -hmm.